Hey guys, in this video I'll go over the HTS pod. You can equip it by putting it on the 5L station here. You can power it on by flipping up the left hard point switch right here. In order to bring it up, you need to go to one of your screens and click on any page you want to replace. I'll just get rid of the test page. So I'll click it again and then you need HAD and here is your HTS display. The way the HTS pod works is it basically, it basically detects radar signals around you and it tries to map out where different SAM sites are. So if you use your DMS switch aft, you can set it as sensor of interest and you can move the cursor around. So if you put your cursor over some symbols, it gives you information. Basically, you have this thing here that says PGM. This is the accuracy of the position. So it goes from one to five. Five is the least accurate, one is the most accurate. So as you fly around, the PGM number will go down. Now the way it works is that as you fly, it kind of triangulates the position. So if you just fly directly straight to a radar, it's not going to be very accurate. But if you kind of fly sideways to the radar, then it will triangulate it better. As you can see, this is PGM2 and this SA6 here is PGM3. So this search radar here is a little bit more accurate than the SA6. Now the lowest is PGA1, which is the most accurate. However, you normally can't get PGM1. There is a special thing you have to do with data link, which I'll go over later in the video. This little dot right here is a waypoint and this dot is a bullseye. Also, if you hover over one of these guys, you're going to see this here, 24 nautical miles and one nautical mile. Basically, for each SAM site, it has an oval, which, and inside that oval, the SAM site could be anywhere within there. So basically, these two distances are the lengths of the oval. 24 is the length of it, and one nautical mile is the width. As you can see, since the search radar is PGM2, the oval is a little smaller. It's 19 miles and 5,000 feet. Also, these symbols will be color-coded. Right now, both of them are yellow, which means they are in search mode. However, if they turn red, it means they are in tracking mode. If they start blinking, it means they fired a missile at you. And if they are green, it means the HTS pod has not detected any radar emissions from them for at least two minutes. If you press TMS up, you can lock one of them up. As you can see, if you get a lock, it'll turn white. And if you lock one of them up, your targeting pod will automatically move to it. So if I lock up this SA6, the targeting pod moves to it. Now remember, the targeting pod might not be super accurate because this here is only PGM3. So it'll just be in the general direction. As you can see, it's not really looking at it, but if I move it around, it's right there actually. So it was decently close. And I can do the same thing with the SA6. The SA6 is a PGM2, so it should be a little bit more accurate. And it looks like the SA6 is right there. Now, if you have something locked up, for me it turned white, but if you have any harm missiles on the plane, it will turn red instead. And also, if you have something locked, you can press TMS left, and it will show you the approximate coordinates of it. And you can press TMS aft to get rid of it. Now, if you have the coordinates showing here, you can actually press TMS right to cycle through the different radars. And if you press TMS aft, it drops the lock and it gets rid of the coordinates. These three buttons on the bottom don't do anything. This is for data link. If you have it on, it'll show all your friendlies on data link. FL will show just your flights and this is off. And this is for the TDOA setting, which I'll go over later. You can also use this to adjust the range. You can have it depressed or centered. And you can press this to zoom in to expand mode. You can also use this button to zoom in. If I press that button, you can see it zooms in like that. And then there's the control page. The manual said most of this stuff on the control page doesn't work. The only thing that works here is the SAM button. And obviously you want to have it on. So next is the threat page. Now when you open the threat page, this chooses the different classes. And each class has different kinds of radars. So I'll put a picture on the screen that shows all the different classes and what radars they have. And basically, the more classes you have enabled, the more radars it can find. However, the longer it'll take to do a complete scan. As you can see right now, it takes a minute to do a complete scan. So if I start disabling classes, as you can see, the scan time goes down. So you can just press all to select all classes. So basically, if you know exactly what you're going to be going for, then you can select only the classes you want to bring the scan time down. But if you're in a multiplayer server or you don't really know what's out there, then you can just select all and it will find all kinds of radars. And the site button here doesn't do anything. Now you cannot adjust which SAMs are for which class. However, if you want, you can make a manual class class. There should be a button here that says manual. The reason it's not showing it from is because I haven't set it up, but if you click list and miscellaneous, you should see HTS here, so click enter, and here you can set up a manual class. So what you need to do is you need to set up the codes for the radars that you want. Now, there's too many codes for me 
me to show a picture on the video, but if you want to find the codes, you can go to the manual and go to Appendix B, and it should be page 568, and that will show you the ALIT codes for all the different SAMs. So if you have a code typed in, like let's just say 111, then you can see the man button and you can enable your manual scan if you want. The last thing to go over is TDOA, which is time difference of arrival mode. As I mentioned earlier, the most accuracy you can get is PGM2. The only way to get PGM1 is if you have other Vipers with you that also have HTS pods. So what you need to do is you need to go to list and click data link and click sequence and sequence again and here are all the people in your flights and your team as you can see there's just me now but in the mission editor what you would do is if someone was selected as part of your data link flight or team they would show up here and if you know their stn number you can manually type them in if you want if you want a more in-depth video on data link i have a video for that but basically you need to set up your tdoa sub team so you can use this switch to go to whoever you want and let's say person three had a stn of 111 Basically, I can highlight this on person three and click any number on my keypad, and it'll say T here, which means they're part of my TDOA sub team. The people on your sub team are people who also have harm targeting pods that you can collaborate with to get a more accurate position for the SAM site to get to PGM1. Now, based on what I've seen on the internet, it seems like you need at least three people to do a TDOA, so make sure you have at least three people. So what you do is you can select this here. If you have it to TM, that means that you're only going to use your TDOA team to do the TDOA. So basically it'll only select the people who have a T next to them. You can also set it to all which will just do all your flight members and team members which is just everyone here or you can set it to none. So for example I'll set it to team and then what you do is you need to lock something up and then you need to hold down TMS left and when you do that it should say TDOA here which means that you have activated the TDOA. Now something important to keep in mind is that in the manual it says that when you do the TDOA, the other people cannot have stuff locked up. You need to make sure they don't have anything locked up on their HTS. Whoever's the one who starts it needs to be the one who locks it up. So if I'm starting it, I need to lock up the SA6 and start the TDOA attack. And then the other people who are in my TDOA team will start contributing to it as long as they don't have anything locked up when I started the attack. That was the HTS pod for the Viper. Thanks for checking out this video and I'll see you later.